The area of the continental U.S. is covered by a series of overlapping navigational charts called sectionals. Any spot on here can be found on at least one sectional, broken out into the boxes we see on this guide. The Washington sectional chart covers the area within this box here, which is a very large area from North Carolina to Philadelphia and from the Blue Ridge Mountains to the Atlantic Ocean. The Washington, D.C. and Baltimore area is just one part of the Washington sectional chart. Inside that portion of the airspace lie four large Bravo airports, National, BWI, Dulles, and Andrews Air Force Base. Focusing on this area of the sectional chart, we get a certain level of detail. It's the same as we'd get for any other part of the country served by a sectional chart, no matter how sparsely populated. There's so much going on in this airspace, though, that the FAA publishes special charts to provide additional detail. Everything within the white box surrounding the D.C. and Baltimore area is also covered by a chart that looks like this. It's called a Terminal Area Chart, or TAC, and this one covers Baltimore and Washington. It has more detail because the scale is larger, double the scale of the sectional chart, in fact. So if we're looking again at the immediate area around D.C., we can compare the level of detail from the sectional chart to the corresponding detail we get from the TAC chart. We see a few extra things jump right out at us. First of all, we have visual landmarks depicted as they actually look in person, rather than just given a symbol. We could see the Capitol and the Washington Monument on the Mall, and some larger buildings in the suburbs. Some stadiums are still depicted with the diamond symbol. This specifically denotes stadiums that have sporting events subject to temporary flight restrictions. We could see FedEx Field depicted in Maryland with the diamond, while RFK closer into town is shown visually, but without the diamond since it no longer hosts larger sporting events. As we said, the scale on the tack is twice as large as that of the sectional, but we still have latitude and longitude lines, and one hash mark of a longitude line still corresponds to one nautical mile. The DC area has a ton of roads and highways, so the tack chart is great for displaying more detail on those roads to help us with navigation. The flight restricted zone, special flight rules area, and prohibited areas around the capital, in addition to all the overlying Bravo, make this complicated airspace that the extra tack detail greatly assists with. Because the TAC charts are created around Bravo airspaces around the country, they're essential for negotiating that airspace. To the west of Dulles, we see the outer ring of the Bravo airspace, with a box and arrow telling us to contact Potomac Approach on 120.45 to request clearance in this area. When calling Approach, it's important to give our position. We could use the standard position relative to a VOR or nav aid, or we can use visual waypoints. These are specific points on the ground that are designated for position reports and that ATC will be familiar with. They're shown with flags over them and the name of the point underlined, Winchester Regional Airport. It's all too common to hear pilots make initial position reports using a town or landmark that's not officially designated and that the controller may or may not be familiar with. All of this detail, the frequency for approach, and the visual reporting points simply isn't given on the sectional chart for the area. Staying out of Bravo airspace can be just as complicated as getting a clearance and flying through it. Over to the northeast of D.C., flights are sandwiched between the surface and 1,500-foot rings of the Bravo around Baltimore on one hand, and the flight-restricted zone on the other. Going through this area means staying out of the Bravo in this narrow corridor below 2,500 feet. There are two waypoints, V-Ponks and V-Poop, which we can program into our GPS to guide us through this route. This is known as a VFR flyway. And if we were to flip the tack chart to the reverse side, we'd see these flyways depicted. This one recommends we fly 1,500 feet northwest bound and 2,000 feet southeast bound. Other tack charts show what are known as VFR transition routes. Here in Las Vegas, we see a transition designed to get us not under the Bravo like the flyway did, but actually cleared through it on a preferred route. Where these exist, they're depicted on the tack chart. None are available in the D.C. Baltimore area. This doesn't mean we can't transition Bravo airspace, it just means that there's no published preferred transition routes that we can reference when requesting clearance from approach. Down to the south of National Airport, we have these gray arrows with an airliner symbol and altitude depictions. These show some IFR arrival routes. Aircraft inbound and national could be flying these routes at the altitudes given, as they follow a standard terminal arrival route. This one specifically is the Iron 7 arrival. So even though we may be clear of the Bravo, we'd be wise to watch for descending jet traffic as we cross the line to avoid wake turbulence. The TAC charts don't cover all airspace in the U.S. the way sectional charts do. They only apply to areas with Bravo airspace. Flying in these areas, it's highly recommended to pack a TAC chart along with your other chart products 
to pick up on these little details missing from the sectional. Foreflight has these built in, of course. Here we see the area zoomed out as we look at a composite of sectional charts. If we zoom in, we can see that the sectional automatically changes to the higher detail tack chart. So if we stay at this level of zoom, we can use the tack. Of course, it only applies to the area the tack covers. So if we move outside that box, it's still just showing the sectional and we get a break in the continuity from tack to sectional. We could turn off the tack if we wanted to also. But whether we're using paper or electronic charts, including the tack in the area you're flying in gets you local knowledge the sectional isn't nimble enough to provide. Thanks for watching. Head on over to the website, flight-insight.com, to get a look at all of our flight training resources. It's more than just private and instrument ground school, which over a thousand pilots have used to ace their check rides already, but also other courses, training articles, and quizzes to help you with whatever you're working on. Dash on over there today.